We're glad to know you're still there and uh, watching the run-up and it's exciting right now we're drawing closer and closer to 2023 and our concern is that under international standards both men and women should have equal rights and opportunities to everything worldwide most especially to participate fully in all aspects and at all levels of political processes Globally, women constitute over half of the world's population and contribute in vital ways to societal development generally. And in most societies, women assume some key roles, which are mother, producer, home manager, and continuity, uh, community rather, organizer, social, cultural, and political activist. And all of all these many roles mentioned, the last has been endangered by women movement. Nigeria has been recording low participation of women in both elective and appointed positions. This is growing concern to many Nigerians. However, concerted efforts have been made by government and non-governmental organizations to increase the level of participation of women in politics. Mm. And of course, these are the issues that, uh, you know, concerns that presently we're going to be looking at and of course despite women constituting 50 percent of population and about 51 percent of votes in elections they do not enjoy their full political rights as their male counterparts uh, overall political representation in government is below seven percent according to a, uh, an available status also women have not still attained the recommended 30 percent seats in government as prescribed by the the Beijing platform of action to which Nigeria subscribes. And it was not until 1979 that women in northern Nigeria exercised their voting rights or began to exercise their voting rights. And this implies that they could not contest or uh, contest for political positions nor participate in choosing their political leaders. I mean, until 1979. Yeah, but also worrisome is not only that it's happening in Nigeria. In Iran right now, a footballer is marked for um, hanging because he was canvassing for women's rights. But we may not be as concerned uh, uh, with the uh, things Iranian happening in Iran right? as we are concerned in Nigeria, even though sometimes when things like this happen, uh, mm. people can be pointing fingers and saying it has happened here, why can't it happen here? We don't want us to get into that situation where someone has to even be the one to talk. Everybody should just know that everybody has the rights. But we are not the ones who are going to talk about this today. We yeah. have uh, Mary Ogwiji, a lawyer and politician who has just joined us, who will be talking about this. Hello and welcome to the run-up, Mary. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. It's still morning. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you are elsewhere. You are not in Nigeria, but in Nigeria it's still morning. Yes, it is. Very <laughs> welcome, much morning. Mary. Oh, <laughs> okay. Now, um... A lot of people think that women have been marginalized politically. Do you share that notion as well? Absolutely. Huh. Absolutely, because um, the statistics actually show this. We have less than 6.7 or even 7% of women representation in Nigeria. Um, I think the, Senate, um, the number of senators we have in Nigeria are eight, as opposed to the 109 seats. So we have 100 and one man in the Senate, and we just have eight women, actually, that as senators, and under the, um, the House of Representatives, we have just 13 women representing different states. As of, um, I think, 360, 360 House of Assembly, um, and House of Reps members, and House of Assembly across the whole states, we have just 21. And um, I think the total number is 100, uh, 400 plus, which shows that we actually are less than 7%. And in Nigeria, I think CDD's statistics shows that we actually, women are like 50.1 or 50 point something, which shows that we are even above like the men population and we should be given a place, at least we should be given more space is in the political um, space. All right. Lots of conversations have come up around this marginalization of women politically. And then you've given us statistics, which is nice. I mean, you mentioned numbers. Uh, but then who do you think is to blame? Is it that the women are not being, are not as enthusiastic as, as they should be about political offices or coming out to vie as much as they should? Or there are not enough level playing ground for them to thrive in politics? Who is to blame? 
I think everybody has its um, fault. Um, first of all, the society that we live in, Nigeria is a patriarchal society. And um, by that, I mean it's men-dominated. And also, gender roles actually affect uh, um, women's participation in politics. Because generally, the society has actually given the role of um, parenting, the role of home, um, home building to women, and have left the leadership roles for the men. And we also have our religious factors affecting us. Religiously, we are always taught in churches that the, men, the man is the head. And whether we like it or not, our religious and um, cultural beliefs actually built up to, be, to what we are today. Even the constitution, the foundation of the constitution and many of our legislations that we actually practice today found this bearing from the laws and um, our religious and our cultural laws. So we can't actually take religion out of it. And because many people actually misquote these words to mean that women should actually not take leadership roles outside the church. Instead of them preaching in the churches, I'm, I'm going to say church, because I'm a Christian, I don't really know so much about the Muslim faith, but I can see that very little, few Muslim women are also actually taking political positions too. But as a Christian, you hear them telling you as a woman, you have to be submissive, you have to listen to your husband, your husband is first, in the, uh, your husband is first, um, takes first place in your life. And so whatever your husband tells you, if your husband does not support you to go into the political field, you won't be able to actually go there. And rather than preaching things like, okay, when Jesus Christ died, for example, it was the women that first that he appeared to first. At least those kind of teachings will actually motivate women um, leadership um, roles. And um, besides that, we also have our legislation. Our legislation is not helping us. Like the 35% um, affirmative action that was denied us is actually very alarming. We are not asking for 50%. We are asking for just 35 And even the national um, gender policy that Nigeria, I, I heard you talking about the Belgium, and I granted that was 1995 women um, conference or so i think that was when it happened nigeria actually subscribed to it and i think it was 30 percent that was given as affirmative action nigeria came and said 35 percent under their national um gender policy and today they are actually having an issue implementing it we are only saying implement what you have actually said you are going to implement and it's now an issue and even when the uh, women trust fund actually sued um the government to implement it and won the case at the federal um, high court the government went to appeal so then you ask do this government does this government actually have the love for women participation in politics because it's very amazing when you hear political speeches you hear people saying um, the political parties will tell you that they um, have given the women spaces like pdp for example has 35 percent affirmative action written in their um, constitution but we don't get to see them so i think we have an implementation problem and the women too we have issues with women one we have issues with other women but um, other women supporting women and you won't really blame them because for a society that have been under male rulership and like i said before our cultural and um, religious background affects us a lot so a woman will only support another woman if her husband or the people around her the people that she sees as uh, how will I put it, as her head tell her that, okay, let's support this person. That's the only way you see a woman going to support another woman, and which is very rare. Every man will prefer to support a man. You hear some um, people saying that they can never allow a woman rule over them, God forbid. You hear some people even saying that it's better for them to go and commit suicide and die than for a woman to become, um, to get leadership positions. And then again, whether we like it or not, if we say we are practicing democracy in Nigeria, then we need to practice democracy indeed. And democracy is, is about inclusiveness. As far as I'm concerned, Nigeria women hold, women generally across the world, we hold 50% of the sky. And you cannot say you are practicing true democracy when a large number of people that are numbering almost 50% are marginalized. And which happens to be women and another problem we have with women is that a lot of women are actually not coming out and i always tell my fellow women whenever we get to speak or sit down i would say if you want to be selected you need to participate because we need knowledge we need to be in the system you don't expect anybody to come and pick you out of the system because now my fear of implementation now is the fact that if they give this 35 percent affirmative action how many women are there 
readily available to actually take up this 35 percent and if there is no chance for an immediate implementation it will now become another dormant law again and that's why i encourage women before you can be selected you need to come out you need to participate when you participate and you get selected then we cannot elect you we cannot elect you in your houses so one of the problems that we have also is women participation now you cannot blame them it's because of the society. Women that get into politics are actually being called different kinds of uh, names. We are actually stigmatized. You hear them calling you maybe a woman of little virtue or somebody, uh, a prostitute. We are actually called different kinds of names because of the ascribed negativity um, that we give to politics here. Because most times politicians are seen as evil people, people that have very little concerns about human rights because of the many promise and failed um because of the many promised and failed issues that we've been having in the past so as a woman once you and you know generally may, may, many people see that it's okay for a man to actually have like a bad um character but as a woman who ordinarily has the nature of nurture naturally they see it that you are an extremely bad person to be going into politics and nobody will want to be ascribed such a status so i, I think all these and other actually affects women's participation well, 35%, sometimes I find it difficult to fathom what it will look like because in elective positions, for instance, you cannot control the will of the people. It is people that vote for the person who, has, uh, who is vying for that elective position, which also includes women uh, that are part of the voters. Now, is there something that the women are doing wrong or it's something that needs to be done more to make sure that people see the women as those who are worthy enough and even the women themselves seeing themselves as let's do for ourselves at least this one time or these two times and all that because you cannot give 35 percent to women and then there are no women to come out and even if there are women that will come out the women themselves will not even vote for the women so what is lacking what needs to be done to change this narrative I think one of the things that are lacking is um, education. We need proper education. We need to educate the public in general, not just um, the fellow women. We need to educate the men too. Because generally, if you are saying, okay, women should um, get political power, you need to tell people what are the advantages. Like, um, for example, I think was it last month or so, there was an NGO that actually went to build um, a borehole for a community for women so that it will ease their water supply and when they finished um, uh, erecting the borehole nobody went there to get water and when they found out they got to ask questions like why were they not getting water they now said that the place where they put the borehole was not convenient because they normally go to fetch water at a particular place for bonding reasons and for other reasons and so that particular spot where they got where they kept the water was not good for them and that gets to show that women we have our own we have our personal issues, we have our differences, we have reasons. The men, the men will not be able to relate with us on the same level, but a fellow woman can. Like, for example, some of the laws that we have against women, like um, the three years before um, a policewoman, a single policewoman gets married, she must actually must have stayed two years. And after staying those two years, she must actually take permission from the police um, commissioner before she gets married. And she must submit records of her husband. We have um, the penal code section 55 that actually gives the man the right to beat up his wife. We have different sections. We have um, even the um, NDLA um, Act. There are a lot of acts and there are a lot of laws that are actually against us as against and against women. And before we will be able to expunge these laws, we need more women. We need more women voices. We need many he's for she's. We need to as educate the society. Only women alone won't be doing it. And how do we do that? By creating space. For example, if you give women appoint, um, appointments, one of the reasons why the society don't like to vote for women is because of uh, money. You know, elections, we can't take money out of elections in Nigeria. We are not even talking about even tipping, um, will I say, uh, and tipping maybe the political party officials and the rest. I'm not talking about even tipping them. We are talking about the general uh, logistics. We have over, like, we have thousands of um, polling units. You need to send your representatives there. You need, we need, we need money for a lot of things in politics. And because women have not been given good spaces, even for jobs, where do they expect them to harness or hash those monies from? And a lot of political parties are not giving support. But if we are able to educate them 
and tell them, okay, these are the advantages of women getting there. Tomorrow, your daughter is going to be in that position. And the mistakes that we normally make is that we forget that whatever we do today affects everybody, affects every one of us. Because if you are cutting a tree, you never can tell where that tree is going to fall. Tomorrow, maybe um, it will land on your daughter. Maybe you, see, you hear some men, they will tell you that their wives can never work. But when you tell them that, okay, would you want your daughter to work? They'll say, yes, they cannot spend that kind of money on their daughters and not let them work. So that means that there is hope and their daughter is a woman. And so that means that there is a way we can actually speak to them to allow women. Then I think another issue, another issue that women have generally is that we come into the political system with competition, like we are trying to be competitive, knowing that everything is against us. We are supposed to be complementary. That is how to get, you don't come into somebody's, um, you don't come into a place that is dominated by, you don't come into a military space that is called dominated by a particular um, set of people and you now come with an axe and you are just three or four and you expect that you are going to win the battle. When you come, you come as an ally, you come as a friend, you come to compliment. I think women should actually use um, their family, most times to try to be like the men in the political spaces rather than us take um, child, rather than us take advantage of our feminine um, of our feminine nature there is nothing in, there's nothing wrong in actually negotiating that a political time for a political meeting should be brought down to 7 p.m rather than 12 a.m or 1 p.m but most times you see we may say even if it's 1 a.m we'll be there at the meeting that is not where our strength lies our strength is in realizing that okay we still have children to take care of at home and because of that we want this meeting to be held seven we are not going there to fight we are coming here to say okay i know that yes people are doing well and we know that you are doing some things and but there are some things you are not getting right for crying out loud we as women actually deserve some spaces but in order to do this we are not here to fight you people we are not here to say people are not doing well but at least take us along at least if women are giving positions like um appointments in different spheres at least to make them to pick up if we are being made like deputies, at least for a start. I'm not saying that is good enough, but at least for a start, it's, it's a starting point for us, being that right now, as the level of women participation in politics is very low. So we need, really need to be strategic rather than competitive at this point. Okay, Mary, Mary, just, just a moment. You, you have rendered all of us evangelists to go now and preach the gospel to the people. <laughs> but you keep mentioning the advantages of having a woman in politics or in leadership positions give us some of these advantages of having a woman in an elective position or a position of power okay i already like kind of explanatorily gave one of the reasons like some of these laws that actually discriminate against against women you know most of the men when you tell them about these laws they may not be able to relate with us at the same um point but when they say okay you are telling a woman that okay before she gets into um the before she um gets married in the police force she must stay two years we are the ones that actually have um biological clocks running down men actually don't have that issue so when you tell when a woman goes and she sees that kind of loss she will be able to give very good reasons why those kind of laws should be expunged like beating women for example we are the ones that feel the pain a woman may be pregnant and you beat her and if you beat her she loses the pregnancy only a woman knows what it feels to lose a pregnancy so we relate with each other and that's on one side and women generally we are meant to nurture you cannot tell us that every great man that every great man that we see in leadership position actually came from a house and who runs the house the woman so you cannot tell me that we'll be good at running homes and won't be good at running nations because whether we like it or not when those when men are stressed and they come back home the woman is the person that gives her good gives him good advice and tries to calm him down so women have this and the women have this way of being able to give like an equitable balance to things. And because of our nature, that's why I said that women generally should take their feminine nature to, as their, to an advantage rather than try to be like the men. Because you will never be able to compete. You will never be best at being somebody else. Right. So we should try to be ourselves and try to win by being women and not try to be, win by trying to act like the men. We should take our positions. Women generally, they are meant to nurture. Once a woman gets into any um, place, for example, let's say if two men are fighting and a woman comes in the middle, they'll say, ah, because of this woman. 
I don't want to hit her because generally men just have this feeling that women are very fragile. And you see, before you know, th those fights are already as in halted. And you see some men, they won't want to insult themselves or Mary, show let, themselves let, in bad lights in front of a woman. Let's, this let's is, these are just social sure. reasons anyway. So you've gone, ahead least, to, you've gone ahead to mention a lot of things that are challenges facing women in politics. And you've also mentioned that how, uh, how that, you know, women participation in politics is poor due to most of these reasons that you churned out to us this morning. So my question is, because we're actually rounding off now, how, if you got that vantage position and you have all these women that you need behind you, what would you do differently? Okay. What would I do differently? If I get the position, I will actually relate because representation, when you talk about representation, you are not talking about representing yourself, you are representing a constituency, you are representing people. And the mistake some of our leaders make is that they don't even have knowledge of the positions that they hold. So the first thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to reach out to my people. What is our problem? What is really the issues? What do people want? Which, what are we going out first to speak about? If you carry people along, because whether we like it or the problem with our politicians these days is that they forget that they are there as in at, um, representing people. They go there and they represent themselves. They are full of ego and they don't even do the right things. But as a woman, I will go back to my society and I will ask them, what do you think? What are the, what are the things we should put forward? What is the problem? What are we are going to put it in preference? And when I'm doing that, I'm not going to go there and start promising bridges or promising um, um, roads where there are this. No, I'm going to make sure that I put a strategic step and I make strategic, um, um, make strategic policies and make sure, okay, like for example, you hear some persons expecting a house of rep or house of assembly member to actually come and build roads. That is not the work of how, and a house of rep or a house of assembly member. It's for the house of rep and house of assembly member is supposed to bring out laws and policies that will help. So I'm going to bring out laws and policies that will help my people. For example, we are suffering from flanny headers clashes in my place. So what are those things that are going to actually help those are those kind of policies that I will, um, those are the kind of policies I will go and make on behalf of my people. Then, for example, if I'm the local government chairman, I would definitely try to make sure that, okay, there are good roads, there are, um, I will try and um, invest uh, in social investment and also use my position to actually reach out to different um, NGOs and see how they can actually come and bring their goodwill to my people. And aside that, if you train a woman today, um, if, if you train a woman today, you are motivating other women and other girls, being that we are in a society that women representation is very poor. So by giving me that opportunity, you have given that girl that um, mindset that you can become what this woman is um, is actually right now. So it will motivate a lot of women. And a woman who is in position is going to be more enlightened. And that enlightenment is going to reach down to her children. That's why you also hear the phrase, train a woman, train the nation. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Mary, for coming on the run up this morning. It's been quite amazing and very enlightening speaking with you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. It was nice um, speaking with you too. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Nyangu, you yeah. seem to have something you want to Evangelist. Uh, <laughs> evangelist <laughs> Nyangu. <laughs> we are all evangelists now. But we cannot say enough. You know, we cannot, mm. we cannot, cannot say enough when you, it comes to telling people that we have equal rights. And there are some things that women can do even better than men. We just have to identify them. But a key thing from what you were saying and from what we have observed over the years is that the women have to build their self-confidence in, them, in themselves so that... You have to be there, like my people. No, don't get me to say it in my language. <laughs> All right, feel free. Don't get me to it's say okay. it in my language. You can feel free. But it's everywhere, not just my people. Yeah. They say you cannot crown an absent king because the, the, the crown has to go on a head. And when the head is not there, you cannot crown that person. So you have to come out and women to stand with the women it will do us a lot of good you go to churches there are more women i don't know about the mosque i think it's you, you I, go to a lot of places there are more women i don't know about yes. the statistics of the the whatever body has been counting us but i think women might even be more than the men how can that kind of a population not make its impact felt it's the orientation that we have women have been thought to be quiet to to not be seen to not be heard and you know the society 
carves that and makes it look like submission. It makes it look like obedience. Meanwhile, that is timidity. That is shutting down. It is an orientation that we've served the women over the years, generations after generations. Like she said, it cannot be done overnight. We need to start reversing that mindset. We need to start reorientating our women, making them understand that they, 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 they need to be heard. They can be heard. They can be heard. They can lead. I, I, be, because well, the society, agree with me or not, have made it, you know, made it more popular for people to feel that leadership positions are for the men. Actually, I think where women belong is even better. We are in the directional position. The Bible says we are the neck. Now, where neck, carry head, go, ego, go. Well, but that's just well, for well, another well, you, day. You see... Um, even though that the time is going. But you see, a lot of societies that I know actually respect women and give them positions even as chiefs. It's not a matter of argument that I'm trying to put up now. So the thing is, I ask myself all the time, this society that they have said have ma has made sure that women don't get hurt and all that, where is that society? It's not in the West. They say it is African. In the society I come from, women lead. Like, <laughs> traditionally, women lead. They have their own women. And when they decide things, it, the community either does it or nothing moves again. Yeah, so I don't know, when they talk about women, where did the mindset come? I always ask myself this. Have you heard the word propaganda? By who? Because it's not my community, for instance. That I is, don't know if Ezenwani was just a name. That is but why. But if it is not just a well, name. Ezenwani is not just a name. Ezenwani is actually the woman king. Come but that's, that's conversation for another day. Because we need to go on this quick break. And the news will come up at noon when we return. We we'll probably might have to touch on this again before we move on. But stay with us. The run-up will be back.